I seek refuge in God from Satan the accursed. May God's blessings be upon you all and accept all your mourning and efforts. And may God place us among those who will avenge the blood of Imam Hussein. Alongside the Holy and Promised Savior, Imam al-Mahdi, may Allah hasten his, his reappearance. I sincerely offer my condolences to the great Savior and Imam, the Holy Imam al-Mahdi, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, and may God hasten his advent. And I sincerely hope for the reappearance, for the speedy reappearance of the Holy Savior. So that this world, which is full of oppression, becomes filled with justice for all humankind, both the believers and those non-believers. I also send my condolences to all the dear believers, men and women, all different parts of the world, the entire oppressed nations, and those free souls on the occasion of the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. I would like to take this opportunity to also thank all these dear believers who have and will engage in morning rituals during the two months of Muharram and Safar. <coughs> These believers have endured so much trouble and hardship, either political, financial, social, you name it. However, they endured all these problems in order to serve the movement of Imam Hussein. And it is my duty to pray for all of you. There is one line that is very important in the famous Ziyarat Ashura. And this is practically the only ziyarat that has been narrated directly from God Almighty. Oh God, make me live, live like Muhammad and his family and make my death like the death of Muhammad and his family. This is such an important line from the famous Zirad Ashura. Simply put, in this line of the prayer, we are saying that, O oh God, make my life in this world 
my encountering with people, my way of spending money and time in this world to be in such a way that is in accordance with the style and school of the Holy Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. So practically we are asking Almighty God to make our lives like the lives of the Holy Ahlul Bayt. And furthermore, we also ask of God Almighty to make our death and our dying to be like the death and dying of the Holy Ahlul Bayt. Naturally, it is impossible to be an exact emulation of the life and death of the Ahlul Bayt, but we are urging God to make it happen to the capacity of our abilities and capabilities. Can we always perform like the Holy Prophet? Of course not. But that is considerate of our capacity. People can be categorized into four groups. There is one group who always reads Ziyarat Ashura every day, and this is recommended to read the Ziyarat every day. These people read the Ziyarat every day, and God willing, they will be successful to act according to this Ziyarat, and their life will be like the life of the Holy Ahlul Bayt, and their death would also be like the death of the Ahlul Bayt. That's one group of people. The second group, however, does not live like the Ahlul Bayt and does not die like the Ahlul Bayt. The examples are Ibn Sa'd and those people who stood against Imam Hussein to kill His Holiness. They lived their lives in opposition to the Ahlul Bayt, and their death was also in opposition to the Ahlul Bayt. They were wretched, wretched, and hateful people in both this world and the hereafter. The other two groups are those who have one part but lack the other. For example, one of them is the, those people who live like Imam Hussein. They're encountering with people, with their family, with their society and community that they live in. <coughs> there are some ups and downs, but they cannot 100% emulate the way of life of the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt. And that is because of the compulsive desires inside every human being. But their lives ends like that of the Holy Ahlul Bayt. And there is also another group, the fourth group. They live a good life, they lead a good life like the Holy Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Example is the Zubair, who was the cousin of the Holy Prophet of Islam. He was also the cousin of the Holy Imam Ali, peace be upon him. During the life of the Holy Prophet, he served the Holy Prophet, and even after the death of the Holy Prophet, for 25 years, Zubair stayed alongside Imam Ali. We have not heard anything historically from this person. But as soon as Imam Ali, peace be upon him, rose to power, since he was the cousin, Zubair was the cousin of the Holy Imam Ali, he was expecting the Imam to give him the governorship of 
one province of the Islamic territory, but he was denied. And then he started a war against Imam Ali, and that war was named Jamal. And his death was not like the death of the Ahlul Bayt, even though his life was quite like the life of the Ahlul Bayt. However, on the other side, we have a person like Hur bin Yazid Riyahi. Hur, if he had not repented in those final moments of his life, and Imam Hussein accepted his repentation. If he had not repented, he was as evil as Ibn Sa'd and Yazid, because Hur and his army of 1,000 soldiers they stopped Imam Hussein in such a horrible place that, and they also barricaded the water in order to make sure that Imam Hussein does not have access to water. Imam Hussein suggested to Hur bin Yazid to move to a village, but Hur stopped him. And as a result, this led to the incidents of Ashura. Now, can you imagine where would he end up in the afterlife if he had not repented? However, he repented, and due to Imam Hussein's generosity, Imam Hussein accepted his repentation and his return. And finally, he became a role model for everyone. Oh God, make the end of our lives good. There is so much discussion going on about the personality of Hor. However, the reactions of what of the evil things he had done caused him some trouble, as he himself admitted that he had made the family of Imam Hussein scared by his army. And that why he knew himself that he will have to pay for that. He himself admitted that he had put fear into the hearts of the family of Imam Hussein, and that's why he was very regretful. However, who did lead the prayers on the body of Hur after he died? Those other companions of Imam Hussein, when they died, after they died, Imam Sajjad or other notable figures led the prayers on their bodies. However, we can see today even that, you know, uh, the case of Hor is different from the other companions. It's somehow like that he is paying off for what he did to the family of Imam Hussein. You can see that a lot of people go to visit the shrine of Imam Hussein, but lesser people visit the tomb of Hur.
Millions and millions of people visit the shrine of Imam Hussein every year on different occasions. However, a smaller number visits the tomb of Hor bin Yazid Riyahi. Of course, nobody denies the great character and personality of this loyal companion of Imam Hussein. However, because of what he did, that he put fear in the hearts of the family of Imam Hussein, I believe that he is paying for it. <laughs> there are things that people have to pay for, even though it is un unintentional. All dear young boys and girls in every part of the world, they need to make up their mind to study the encounter between Imam Hussein and Hor ben Yazid Riyahi. I have personally have studied about their encounter, which is a very unique one. We all have heard a lot of stories on the pulpits from the religious speakers. And we can see no other examples like this one, like this special encounter in all history. And we can make a movie about this. And the entire world needs to know about it. And th at the core of it, we have to introduce how Imam Hussein handled and forgave Hor ben Yazid Riyahi. When Imam Hussein arrived in the vicinity of Karbala, Hor and his army of 1,000 soldiers arrived there too. Some people say that at that time Imam Hussein had an army of 1,500 soldiers and it was very probable that Imam Hussein could defeat the army of Hur at that moment. Of course, we know that Imam Hussein did not allow Hazrat Abbas to fight, really fight the enemy. Had he be given the permission to fight, to truly fight the enemy, things could be different. And at that time, at that point, Imam Hussein's army could easily defeat the army of Hor ben Yazid. Imam Hussein allowed all his companions to fight except for Hazrat Abbas. He himself also fought. <coughs> However, he did not allow Hazrat Abbas to fight the enemy. Anyways, things could be different, and Imam Hussein could be in the city of Kufa. However, it was all God's plan because God wanted the entire humanity to be tested. The Ashura was supposed to happen. And God wished to see Imam Hussein martyred. And this is actually the ultimate purpose of humanity. And we can see that in the Holy Quran as well. So that all those who are going to perish, perish with clear evidence. And so those who are going to be saved, be saved with clear evidence. And the clear evidence is Imam Hussein. 
خب امام حسین علیه السلام خیلی کشم کش شد شنیدید از آقایون و آس you can know you already know a lot about uh, the discussions between Hur bin Yazid Riyahi and Imam Hussein Imam Hussein kept offering suggestions of leaving the land of Karbala to visit other villages but Hur did not allow Imam Hussein and on the orders of Ibn Ziyad Hur was trying to keep Imam Hussein away from water and Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, had already given orders to his soldiers to bring a lot of water with them. On the 8th of Dil Hajjah, Imam Hussein left for Karbala. And a lot of people joined Imam Hussein on his way. The distance between Mecca to Karbala was a two week journey. And a lot of people joined Imam Hussein on this journey. And Imam Hussein took this, took on this journey, and it lasted for three weeks. It means that Imam Hussein was going a very, on a very slow pace, so that a lot of people could join him. And when the army of Hur arrived in Karbala, they were thirsty, and Imam Hussein gave them enough water to be saved. Imam Hussein himself, by his own hands, offered water to one of the soldiers of Hur bin Yazid Riyahi, who was on the verge of dying. Imam Hussein gave water not to only the soldiers of the enemy, but also to the horses of those soldiers. A horse is usually a very tolerant type of animal. And therefore you can see that horses are being used in wars, not the other types of animals. So, a horse is a very tolerant animal. According to experts, when a horse is very thirsty, he starts to drink a lot of water in excess amounts. I have never seen in history such a behavior on the part of any other personality, even the Holy Infallibles, even in those wars that were imposed on Imam Ali. Usually when a horse is very thirsty, they just allow the horse to to take sips of water because the horse can hurt himself. 
However, Imam Hussein allowed all those horses to be fed and watered completely. And now, can't we disclose these beautiful realities to the entire world? Imam Hussein could simply leave them alone and not give them water. On the orders of Imam Hussein, the companions of the Holy Imam put large bowels of water in front of these horses. And the Imam made sure that all those horses are fully watered. For three and four times, Imam Hussein emphasized on giving water to the horses. We should let the world know of this reality. Today, we have so many different means at hand. The enemies have make, are making movies to propagate their lies and their hateful cults. Shouldn't we be encountering their propaganda machine? This is our responsibility and this is a collective duty. We need to make sure that the entire world knows the truth about Imam Hussein. And today, we are so much behind this responsibility. The story of war itself, per se, with all of its details, if presented to the entire world, can move the whole world. It would sh certainly make the non-believers be attracted to the Holy Islam and to the Holy School of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Imam Rada, peace be upon him, has said that if people learn the beauties of our words, they will instantly follow us. A, a large majority of the non-believers in the entire world, if they learn about the truth of Imam Hussein, they would instantly follow Imam Hussein because they are not bigoted or biased people. About Imam Hussein, the Holy Prophet said that Hussein is from me. And this is quite exceptional. The whole Islam and the legacy of the Holy Prophet has survived because of the sacrifices of Imam Hussein. And we need to make sure that the world knows about this, so that the world knows the true version of Islam and not be disgusted by the false Islam. Because there is so much lies spread about Islam. There are so many different satellite TV channels that propagate anti-Islamic lies 24-7. Thanks God, today the Shia Muslims are spread all over the world in both Muslim and non-Muslim countries. And they need the determination to counter this propaganda machine. And my suggestion is to clarify and propagate how Imam Hussein handled and dealt with Hur bin Yazid Riyahi, which is something very exceptional in the entire history of humankind.
pool mikhat jama konan qarz konan we need to make this happen. If it needs money, we need to raise funds. We need experts, we have to train people. We have to start now. The Holy Fourteen Infallibles, they are all great subjects for movies and similar productions that can inform the entire world of their true characters and personalities. Horp and Yazid Riyahi stopped Imam Hussein and somehow was rude to Imam Hussein on multiple occasions. The Imam said, May your wife, may your mother mourn your death. A lot of people assume this saying, which is an Arabic saying, to be a curse. I myself think this is not a this is not a curse because I believe that this is a reality that Imam Hussein is predicting if Hor keeps on his current or then behavior his mother would have be upset with him. So, in my personal belief, I think that this is not a curse word. This is actually something that Imam Hussein knew, that if he, that is Hor bin Yazid Riyahi, keeps on his hostile behaviors towards Imam Hussein, he would be damned. and as you can see, this saying is very customary among people even today. And in terms of Arabic language, I have to say that the Arabic language is so flexible that sometimes people use the uh, present or even the past tense in order to uh, signify something that is going to happen in the future, and that is very customary. I personally knew a lot of phenomenal and great Islamic scholars in the past who used to uh, walk bare feet and with no uh, cape on their shoulders uh, on the day of Ashura, and that is because of 
some reliable narrations and traditions that we have. There are traditions that you can find in Baharal Anwar and other books that you can find on this particular ritual. Uh, for example, if someone has lost a loved one, like a father, a brother, someone close to him, when someone loses a loved one, it is recommended for them to walk outside with bare feet and also with no cape. And there is a reliable tradition in which Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, has said on the day of Ashura, people should behave as if they have lost a loved one. And that is something that there is to signify that people are recommended to not wear shoes and be bare feet and walk outside and without using or wearing any capes. This is a religious recommended deed which is quite customary among people. These days people are not wearing capes anymore, but the first part can be uh, applied to people on this day, that is to not wearing shoes. We have traditions that the Holy Prophet of Islam attended the funeral of Sa'ad bin Ma'az while he was bare feet and he had no capes. It's a lengthy tradition, but one part of it describes how the Holy Prophet attended this funeral. So this is a special thing about Imam Hussein that everyone can uh, behave like they have lost a loved one. There are so many things special about Imam Hussein, and this is one of them. Usually it is not recommended for people to be bare feet and not wear any capes on the martyrdom of the Holy Prophet Imam Sadaghan or other infallibles. It is not a religiously recommended deed. However, when it comes to Imam Hussein, it becomes a religiously recommended deed. And this is why Imam Hussein is a special. Decades after the Ashura tragedy, Imam Sadaq, peace, peace be upon him, recommended his companions to behave as if they have lost a loved one in the morning of Imam Hussein's martyrdom. <coughs> I have repeatedly mentioned this and I'm going to repeat it again, once again, just as a reminder. You can find it in the book Urwatul Wathwa and other books. Usually there are 10 conditions for one person to be eligible for going to Hajj. One of the conditions for that person to go to Hajj is that the passage to Hajj, the journey to Hajj, must be safe. So that is to say, if there are dangers on the journey, you're not required to attend Hajj. 
That is so strict that if you ignore the threats to life and attend the Hajj and nothing happens to you, a lot of scholars say that your Hajj is invalid because you you should have not attended the Hajj because of those threats. So one of the conditions for going to Hajj is that the uh, journey should be safe. Since the time of Imam Zainul Abidin until the short occultation, which is 150 years, the visitation to Imam Hussein Shran was never safe. It was never safe. However, we can see that the Holy Infallible is kept encouraging people to make this visitation. And this is also another special thing about Imam Hussein. A lot of those pilgrims were killed, they were imprisoned, even they were mutilated by the enemies. During the time of the Omeyyads and the Abbasids, these atrocities happened, but in those those short eras, that these two dynasties clashed with each other, there was enough room and space for the pilgrims to visit the shrine of Imam Hussein. However, in those other times, a lot of pilgrims were put in prison, they were mutilated, and they were killed because of visiting Imam Hussein's shrine. A small group of people chose the vicinity of Kabbalah as their homes, but Mutawakkil threatened to kill them. And those people selflessly offered their lives. Mutawakkil ordered that anyone who stays on the in the vicinity of the grave of Imam Hussein, we will put them in a special prison called Mutbaq. As you can see, this threat was more scary than death. In spite of all these threats, the Holy Infalbas never discouraged people from going to, ha to the visitation of Imam Hussein's shrine. One person came to Imam and said that, I'm scared of this journey, should I go? And the Imam said, don't you like God to see you scared in our way? And again, encourage him to take this journey. And here I would like to talk to you about the great Arbain walk. God Almighty in the Holy Quran has said that you can also learn from the infidels. The polytheists traveled 400 kilometers to fight the Muslims and destroy Islam. And the Holy Prophet ordered the Muslims to defend. And the Holy Quran says the details of this story. The Holy Prophet used to be a very moral person, and a lot of those Muslims brought excuses to not attend the fight against infidels. And in those cases, the Holy Quran says that the Holy Quran says that if you are scared of death or you are scared of dying or getting injured and wounded in, a, in the battle, you should know that the enemies are afraid of the same things. Yet they are here to fight you, and you are just frightened to fight them. That is, considering the fact that in all those battles, the number of casualties on the infidel side was much higher than the Muslim side. And the Holy Quran was rebuking the Muslims 
saying that you should not be afraid. You should be as brave and courageous and steadfast as the infidels when it came to battles. There is an annual uh, religious uh, walk attended by non-Muslims. And uh, many governments have started visa revocations and other facilitations to help people attend this uh, annual congress of those groups of people who are not Muslims. Everything is is very cheap when it is time for that special travel or annual event or festival, as, as we should say. And that religious festival, which is uh, for non-Muslims, has brought about a lot of facilitations. People attending that event don't have to pay a lot of money for uh, residence or for uh, food or for visa or transportation. And it is interesting to know that the prices of different commodities and services drop when it is time for that annual event or festival. It is one of the cases that we Muslims should learn from those non-Muslims. The government of Iraq should not should not charge pilgrims of Imam Hussein with any money for the visa. The visa for Imam Hussein should be free of charge. At least we can learn from those non-Muslims and make facilitations for this religious uh, pilgrimage that we have every year. The Muslims, the uh, non-believers, before the onset of Islam used to go on Hajj too. The policies used to also go to Hajj. However, their Hajj was different. Now, all these years have passed, and now today, we are seeing a lot of people, millions of people, attending the annual Arbain walk. We can see that the dear people in Iraq have seen to it that the pilgrims won't have to pay for residence or for food. But we still need uh, more hotels in the vicinity of Karbala city so that the pilgrims of this holy imam don't have to sleep on the streets. They need to be uh, decently fed and decently housed during their residence in the city of Karbala. And if we fail to make this happen, it is somehow like disappointing Imam Hussein. And this is mainly the job of governments and powerful and well-to-do Muslims. So for the Arabian pilgrimage, we, may, we have to make sure that the pilgrims are provided with enough housing and food in a decent manner. The Muslims should learn this actually from the non-believers who have made this happen for their own religious festivals.
کشورهای کفر کم و بیشتی رو بار میرن اگه تکرار شد زیاد شد Then on the dear young believers in non-Muslim countries, they can convince the governments of their own of the countries they live in to start facilitations for this Arabian pilgrimage. India is a country with the majority of non-Muslim population, and the Muslim population is in minority. تعطیل برای شیعه ها میلاد مثلا امیر المومنین صلوات الله حالا و یادم نیست تعطیل برای غیر شیعه ها فلان وقت تعطیل برای فلان قسم از کفار and we have different types of holidays that are for muslims shias sunnis and uh, different groups however there are specific days that are holidays for the entire Indian population and one of those holidays is the day of Ashura and on this day the day of Ashura the entire India goes into a holiday into a holy day that is off however we can see that in many Muslim countries the day of Ashura is not a holiday it's not a day of a remarkable day that that the government acknowledges and we have to make this happen. I hope that the Almighty God grants all of us His favors to uphold the Husseini rituals during this month of Muharram and Safar so that we can excel and improve on our efforts to serve the Husseini movement. May God's peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad and his pure household. وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين الله هذا المرمي مو انت ونشدك والدمع نهرين انت الحسين